What's going on everybody? It's Tyler here with Worship Innovation and today I have got another video talking about using a live stream setup in Pro Presenter 7, getting lyrics with lower thirds. And today we're going to be talking about using multiple looks to create a really awesome and uh, just really, really great looking live stream service that uses multiple looks for different portions of the service. And we are going to cue those looks uh, using an audience look uh, action in Pro Presenter 7. So real quick before we dive into this video, if you haven't checked out the previous video on how to just get a basic look set up for a live stream, go check out my other video that I did on setting up a live stream output per output for Pro Presenter 7. There's some prerequisite information that you guys need to know. And uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about how audience cues or audience look cues work, then check out the video that I did over uh, countdowns, the calendar, and using multiple looks in Pro Presenter 7. Today, we're going to be applying all that information to the context of a live stream output, and I'm going to be showing you guys what all you need to do. Real quick, before we dive into this, I want to show you guys my screen configuration just so you can see. The, I've got my main output set out as a placeholder. Uh, this is just unconfigured right now. I have an announcement going over a placeholder. And then I have my live stream output, which is currently going out through NDI. Now, the reason why I have this going out through NDI rather than just a placeholder is because I wanted to clear up some miscommunication that I gave in my previous live stream video talking about alpha key and alpha channel information. So it turns out that ProPresenter 7 will only send out alpha, alpha key information through NDI and SDI. So if you have the Blackmagic devices or whatever that uh, allow you to separate the key and fill information from an alpha key source, then you just have to go over to the alpha key section and press enable. Now, if you don't have that availability, that's fine. You can use the screen color over here to change the color of your screen to a lime green, for instance, or a blue or whatever you want for a chroma key. Or you could just leave it black and, you know, do like all white uh, text boxes and then you could do something like a luma key. Um, however, I've been having really good luck with changing my screen color to green and using a chroma key. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and have the alpha key information selected because if I were using NDI, then that's what I would be doing. Then I also have my stage display set up as a multi-view here. This is just so that I can show you guys all three displays at the same time. So if I switch over to my multi-view, uh, you guys are going to be able to see that I've got all three outputs currently running on um, a... I've got all three outputs currently running my announcement slides. So I've got my regular announcements uh, that are triggered to the announcement layer. And those are just going. And I can add a countdown message over the top if I want. And that's going to show up on everything. So I'm going to first show you guys this look and what all is going into it. So if I go back to my main window and I go to my edit looks, you can see here that I really have four looks that I'm able to toggle between in Pro Presenter. So the first one is my pre-show announcements look. So this look is basically what I want my live stream to look like when I'm doing pre-show announcements. So the first thing is we don't have a mask. My props and messages are all being shown across all three screens. And then they all three have the announcements layer. Now, there's also the ability for the live output as well as the main output to show the slide and media. However, this isn't super necessary for this particular look because the announcements layer is over the top of the presentation layer, but I still have it selected just because I use this to make other looks. So that's the pre-show announcements look. Now, I created a new look preset by selecting... Uh, this add preset button. And I'm actually going to go ahead and I will manually do the sermon and worship time ones. However, I've already done the countdown one in a previous video. So this um, pre-show announcements here is showing the announcements across all three screens. Then my countdown look is for when I switch to my large countdown video. I want that video to show across my main display as well as my live stream display. And so essentially what I've done is created 
a duplicate. Notice the look for the live stream and the look for the main is the exact same. They both are going to show the slide and media layers and nothing else. So props and messages are gone and the announcements layer is gone. So if I were to play this large countdown, which has a cue to change that the live look over here to my countdown look, switch over to my multi view. You guys can see now that my countdown is showing on the live stream output, which is on bottom and the main output, which is on top. And my announcement slides are still going using the announcements layer. Uh, this would be, you know, my television loop out in the lobby as well. The countdown's the exact same. All that was done in a previous video. I'm not going to talk about that here, but that is changing the look. So now we get out of that into the worship time. So in order to do this and get my look ready for worship time, I'm going to create us a new preset that is going to be called worship time. So this worship time preset needs to first off have the announcement layer just showing the announcements as well as props and messages. The main display does not need to see props and messages and it does not need to see announcements. It doesn't need video input and neither does the live stream and it also doesn't need props and messages. So essentially the main output and the live stream are exactly the same. Here's where the difference is. Here on this presentation slide, I am able to choose a theme for this look. And for this, I want to go to my uh, text only lyric styles and go to Helvetica lower third transparent. Now this is a uh, theme that I created off of a theme that already existed within um, ProPresenter 7. And basically I just made it have a transparent background and uh, made it a lower third. This could be any theme that you created. You can select any theme for your lyric slides that you want. You could use some of these that come with ProPresenter 7. Um, it really does not matter. The biggest thing is that it's a lower third with a transparent background. That's it. So now when I go to my first song here, I want to add an action. So this first song is Good Grace. I want to add an action here and I want to add an audience look action and I want it to change the uh, audience look to worship time. So now let's say my countdown reaches zero and I clear my message it gets time for the first song and we go to good grace. So I switch and now we can see um, on my multi view. Actually, there's something wrong in this worship time look. Uh, let's fix that. Oh, yes. So the live stream look needs to only show the slide. It does not need to show any media. OK, that's important. So no media, just slide information. Um, so now if I go to my multi view. You guys can see announcement slides are still running out in the lobby. We've got the main display uh, showing our motion background as well as a text box that is having a, uh, a media fill, which is another video that I did. But when I go to the first songs, you can see now my lower screen uh, that is my live stream output just has the lower third Helvetica, uh, you know, the lower third Helvetica theme. So there is some um, formatting here that you need to do. So whatever your theme is for your live stream, if it's a two lines per slide theme, then your main display also has to match that formatting. So say you want to show four lines per slide on your main screen, but you only want to show two lines per slide on your live stream, you're going to have to somehow compromise and make it to where there's either four lines per slide on both or there's two lines per slide on both. You can't have one showing two lines and another showing four lines. They do have to show the exact same amount of text. Okay, So uh, this is essentially what our worship time is going to look like. And this is what we did in the previous video. All right. So now let's say, though, that you need to go to your presentation for your sermon slides. And when you do this, it can work with a regular Helvetica font, but it's not the best when we get to scripture uh, because it doesn't show the scripture reference 
and we might just want to have a different theme for when we're doing our teaching time. So I'm going to once again go in and edit my looks, and I'm going to create a new look called Sermon. All right, now this look, once again, the main output does not need, and the live output do not need props or messages. They do not need announcements. The live stream does not need media. The announcements do not need slide or media. And neither of these need video input. So this is our setup. All I'm going to do is in this look, I'm going to change. I'm going to go to a text-only style. And for this one, I want to do... Um, Georgia lower third scriptures. Okay. So what's really uh, nice about this is now in this look, what I'm going to do is go to my start of my uh, sermon presentation, right click, add action, audience look action, sermon. So let's say here that we are at um, another in the fire. I'm going to real quickly switch my look back to worship time. And here we are. We're doing another in the fire. Everything's going great. Um, you can let me switch over to my multi view real quick. So you can see here um, everything's looking good. We've got our lower third. And now we are going to go down to our sermon. And as soon as we switch to our sermon, you notice the theme changed. All right. So I would want this to be the exact same, you know, font across both, but uh, you can get the point here. I don't want to actually go and design another theme, but um, you can see that we have got the main screen on top showing everything. And then the bottom screen is adjusting that to the new theme. When we get to scriptures, it shows our scripture reference as well as the scripture in a nice lower third format. And that is that. Now, I want to point out a problem that I have noticed with this. And it is that the themes do not work well when you have text that is revealing um, on one slide. So, for instance, we look here at this point one uh, on our uh, main screen here. So it says one point and then supporting point one, supporting point two, supporting point three, and then it goes to the next slide. Now, notice how on the bottom for our live stream output, it just shows supporting point three and supporting point two. It doesn't show any of these animations or anything like that. This is a problem that I have noticed. Maybe Renewed Vision will fix this in the future. Um, to you know, make the themes show revealing text. But right now, text that has any kind of animation or a slide that has any kind of build does not currently work with your uh, live stream theme. Now, for my church, we just have one slide that shows, and then we cut to a main uh, logo, and then we have another slide that'll come up with our scriptures, and then we'll cut to the logo and. So we don't use building um, slide presentations. We don't use text that reveals over time or anything like that. So for us, it's not an issue. However, for your church, it might be. But I will share with you one more thing that I think is important if you are using this kind of a live stream setup, and that is sending both your main output as well as your live stream output through your switcher. So it can be tempting to just have your live stream output going to your switcher and then from that go to your you know, live stream encoding. However, what I've noticed is it's very nice to have the main output going to your switcher as well and then maybe using an auxiliary out from your switcher to send just the main output to your, uh, just sending the main output to your uh, screens. What's nice about that is whoever is switching for the live stream, if you do have something where the theme is not working properly or you, you know, want to use build uh, building slides or, you know, revealing text, well, then your technical director can know about that and will know to switch to a full screen output that actually shows what's going on on the top screen or your main output. That way, he doesn't have to you know, worry about the discrepancy of the lower thirds over here. 
he can just go to your main output. And then once that slide is done, then he can cut back to camera and overlay the lower thirds back on top using his key. So that's something that I personally do. I run both my main output and my live stream output through my switcher, and I use an auxiliary bus in my switcher to send that to the projectors. Um, in a future video, I'm going to be showing you guys how this all works with keying and everything, show you guys how to set up the chroma key, the luma key, as well as um, the you know how to possibly set up the alpha key. And then from there, uh, you know, you guys should be good to go. So I know a ton of people have had questions about live streaming using ProPresenter 7. This is a super awesome feature and everybody's had a ton of questions about it. Hopefully this goes and shows you how you can have multiple looks for your service. Here we're using four looks for the service. We've got pre-show announcements, countdown, worship time, and sermon. And those are being queued by a um, audience look action right here. And so whenever you want to make that change, just add an audience look action, and that will easily switch between the different looks that you have set up for your service. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you guys have learned something useful. If you have, please sure to like and subscribe and click the bell for all notifications for future videos coming out as well as check out our website, worship-innovation.com, for the latest uh, blog articles and podcasts from Worship Innovation. Um, thank you guys again for seeing, watching this video. I will see you guys in the next one, and until then, keep on innovating.